So next we have, if I'm not mistaken, Matthew. Would you come share your work? Matthew Fielding of Siani. And I will pull <laughs> okay. Let's see. And there we are. And that's not what I'm going to do. Great. Thank you. I think it's a real testament to SCI when uh, the moderator of a session actually uh, informs you about something I wasn't even planning to mention in the project. It just shows the depth of knowledge we have within the Institute. Um, so thank you for helping me to scramble around to add a bit to my presentation just now. Um, this project is uh, non-scientifically called Life on a Low Carbon Pathway and uh, features a number of, uh, of our colleagues from SCI um, who are listed on here and then a few also that haven't been uh, listed on here who've helped out in much uh, smaller ways with the project. Um, this project is a very, very exciting one as uh, Eric said it takes place in Sierra Leone and, and really it takes place right at the, the intersection of environment and, and development and what we try and do is to look at the impacts of uh, agro-industrial bioenergy investment in, in Sierra Leone. We then try and link that up onto or to show how that, what role that plays within a low carbon pathway. Um, the potential in Sierra Leone for a low carbon pathway is very high due to the relatively undeveloped level of the country. Um, so I think so. it's a, an exciting project to be uh, involved with. Um, what we look at is, two, is on two levels. One is we have a, a part of the project that looks at uh, the small scale or the potential for small scale bioenergy production of, of sugar cane. Um, and then the other side of the project looks at the transformation of uh, local communities under the, the impact of the bioenergy investment. So uh, I thought to maybe give some statistics and figures of the project might help you to quickly get an understanding of what it is we're, we're talking about here. So there's, as I said, 16 people involved uh, in the project, um, five SEI researchers uh, from different centres, one local research coordinator in Sierra Leone, six local researchers, one communicator, two interns, and one project manager. That's me. That's also my get out of jail free card if there's any technical questions later. Um, we also have four SEI centres involved, from staff from four different SEI centres uh, Bangkok, Africa, Stockholm, and uh, the US centre in Davis. We're talking about 10,000 hectares of sugarcane plantation under irrigation. The speed of the internet, 56 kilobytes per second. That is, that is almost too little to do anything on the internet. And that's when electricity allows. Big constraint of the project, that is. Uh, we've completed 323 household surveys to date and 36 uh, PRA studies to date so far. Participatory rural appraisal, uh, that stands for. Five incidences of stuck in the mud to date has also a big impact on the efficiency of the research. Uh, that's through, we're working in nine villages, uh, spent 29 nights, 26 nights under the stars, not, not me personally, but the, the researchers who get their hands dirty have. Uh, and we're going to repeat the existing survey, or well, the, the survey we've carried out, um, two more times over the next 12 months. So here's Sierra Leone, it's a country in West Africa. Um, you might have heard of it through the, uh, the war that was there about 10 years ago, that's over now. Uh, the red dot is the um, McKinney, or the McKinney site of the ADAX bioenergy project that we're, we're looking at. Um, and here you can see the passage of time. Uh, Google Maps have updated one of the parts of the research area and not the other. So these uh, actual centre pivots are in fact quite massive. Um, 80 hectares across in some of them and some are bigger. I think that's even the smallest one. So the massive irrigated areas of, of uh, sugar cane there. Um, so here, just to go into the depth of the project a little bit more, we're working across, broadly speaking, five working areas. Um, th three of those areas uh, inform the, the sustainability of small-scale bioenergy production. Uh, and then also four of those areas are look at the sustainability implications on local communities. Now, 
it's, it's a real interesting part of this project is that it involves a partially a desk study and partially field uh, you know d primary data collection that's something I think that really is something unique about SCI the way we're in within one project we're able to take both levels uh, to look at one uh, solid piece of research that comes out at the end I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a second um, so in the the, in the sustainability level, when, we, when we're looking at things like water access and availability, energy access, livelihoods, we're getting all that information through the household surveys and also through our participatory techniques as well, where we do things like resource mapping, a transect walk, impact mapping, and a, a seasonal calendar as well. And we do that for every community. Um, and then for the uh, sustainability, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the bioenergy production, that's a parcel life cycle analysis that also looks at some of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the potential of smaller smallholders growing of sugarcane that could feed into the project. Um, and both of these, uh, I see the arrows moved, both of these feed into our sustainability analysis and this is where the complicated title of the project comes in. The sustainability analysis of an agro-industrial sugarcane production from the perspective of both Rural, rural transformation and low carbon pathways. And then the bit I always forget is how do, how do we really see how this presence of a, a agro-industrial investment in sugarcane, how does that really, how do we understand how that's going to impact the development of Sierra Leone? Well, we have key stakeholder interviews, which are people from the Ministry of Energy and Water in, in Freetown, um, the Government Environmental Protection Agency. So we try and understand this investment has taken place in your country, but how do you see it? What role do you see it playing in the further development of the country? So it's quite an interesting um, position we're, we're in. So while some of our <laughs> senior researchers work from the desk on the partial life cycle analysis, other people go out into the field uh, and engage in some real work. So recently, uh, in September 2013, we've completed the training of seven field staff out in McKenney region from the local university. Uh, it's important to say that it's not, it's not me and, and my other colleagues, the European colleagues that are out there, but it's actually local people from the region who, who speak the same language and obviously are much more familiar with the local cust cultures and customs. So when they're asking the questions, it's a lot less weighty than it is if I was to ask the same questions. Um, we completed the first of three surveys, as I said, and we've engaged with our stakeholders on national and uh, regional levels across Africa as well. Um, and then just quickly, in the last couple of minutes, some lessons we have learned from the field work, and that is that it's good to invest in high-quality training. This is Jacqueline Sinagua here from Africa Centre, teaching the, our, uh, our students there about participatory rural appraisal techniques. Here is some impact mapping from one of the communities. More uh, resource mapping there. They're, they're encouraging the participants in the process to draw the, the resources on a map of their villages. Um, we know it's important to frame your questions appropriately, such as on this dislike form. Uh, that's, that's very important in field research. You should always remember to use reliable equipment and to travel in daylight and to bring suitable tools. Um, we remember that now. Uh, stay clean and tidy, as in don't get stuck in the mud. And be adaptable. If you don't have paper, there's always a wall or a step or something to use. Uh, we're currently uh, engaging with a, a colleague in Bangkok who is doing some statistical analysis for us on the study, which is very good. Um, it's good to bring people into the project. And we're excited to get the second survey started in April this year. And I'm very happy that this session even exists at the uh, research forum. I think it's valuable. And uh, it's good to just uh, show how field work is a important part of the SCI package as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>